It's time for another tale from the glass-guarded world. Ashley plays Terra Dane, the human fighter. Josh is Zartok, the tiefling wizard. And Gaston, the rogue and bard. Jessica is Coral Petricor, the Genasi druid. And Mama Sass, the half-orc bard and barbarian. Chris plays Aster Fortuna, the half drow rogue and bard extraordinaire. Last time, our courageous heroes finally escaped from the grip of the Neogi ship. Coral and Aster boarded it and made their way to the controls, rescuing two people along the way. They narrowly escaped before the ship shattered against the ground. Now the entire group, exhausted, injured, and devoid of spells, must decide what to do next. Gerlos is dead. The gnome village location is no longer a secret. Is anywhere safe? Should they go after Laverian, or should they go after the Neogi? Or maybe they should carry out the Far Off One's mission. Dear listener, I just don't know. Yogi ship has just crashed into the island of Benorthen. It's not too far below you, actually, since your ship was falling nearly as long as it was. The remaining grappling arms have shattered, the spider-like hull has collapsed, and the towers on top of the ship have disappeared into a cloud of dust. Nothing could have survived that. Lumpen has stopped Corellin's needle, Anzna is cradling Gerlos's body, and many of you are badly hurt. You've got two rescued prisoners who have just landed on your ship with Coral, on her summoned eagle. One of the former prisoners is in decent shape and glad to be free, and the other seems to have been broken by his experience with the Niyogi. You know that the Gnome Village was in bad shape when you left it. There are also bigger issues to think about. We'll get to those in a little while, and I'll give you a more thorough recap of recent events. But first, let's figure out what everyone is doing right now. Lumpen wants to know the next destination. I think me and Coral are still floating, so that's Zartok and and Terra? We we just got back, I yeah. think, is we what we're back? saying. Coral and Aster have floated back to Corellin's Needle, and Lumpen is just hovering the ship over the ruins of this other ship, and he wants to know where you'd like him to go next. Coral, first thing after she touches down on the ship, uh, goes over to Ansna, and uh, there are tears in her eyes, and she says... Uh, I'm so sorry. I was gonna, I could have helped him, but I thought thought we were gonna die, and I needed to save this man. She gestures towards the guy who had been flying the ship, and I thought that would fix it all, and it didn't. And now I can't help Carlos. I'm so sorry. Uh, Anzna is just, um, she's just holding Carlos, and she sighs and says, "It's not your fault. It's this idiot's fault. It's." He charged right in against this monster he couldn't defeat. It's his own fault. Stupid, stupid Gerlos. Uh, what was he thinking? Should have known. I should have, I should have told him to stay back. The people that are on the, on the eagle, what are they doing? I think it was just one, right? There are two people. Two. The healthy guy, the guy that was in a cell, has climbed off and is kind of looking around, not really sure what to do. The other guy, Coral, if you're not holding him, he just slumps to the ground. He just sort of slides off the eagle and collapses on the ground. I was not holding him, so yeah, that's where he's at. He's just mumbling something. Hmm. I'll walk up to uh, then to Coral and to Ezna. I don't know where, where Terra and Zartok are at the moment. But... I think everyone's on the deck. Okay. Except for Lumpen. <sighs> this is uh, in the midst of all of the action. There was no real time to think. Seeing Gerlos like this is, is, is not something I'm used to. This might be one of the first times that we lose a valued and honored member of our crew. He may have been goofy, but he was one of the bravest people that I knew. I don't want to lose my friends and these 
creatures took someone important from us today. And I'm angry about it. But we have to figure out what we need to do and we have to find somewhere to play Scalos. Maybe we should return to the to the village. I believe he deserves a burial before we do anything else. That's just my opinion. Hey, Zartok. Mm-hmm. Your tail kind of taps you on the shoulder and then points down at the wreck below you. Oh, yeah. What? what, you, what you want to go for a swim? Oh, it's not in the water. It's on the land. Oh, it's crashed on the land. Yeah. Okay. Are we, we, you're saying we could uh, pillage it, huh? It points down and sort of points in several different places. Make a perception check. Ooh. How does how does Zartok do that? <laughs> now that I can't help you with. <laughs> That's a an eight. An oh. eight? Dear. Uh, yeah, you just see this big wreck scattered across the ground. Yeah, it's a shattered mess, but that's really all you can see. There's snow all around it. You're not looking very carefully. You don't really see anything interesting. Is Artok talking out loud to his tail? Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like we've seen this before. But uh, Zartok, I don't know if you're contemplating the wreckage down there. There was uh, um, something that I found before we exited the ship. It looked like it was their treasure hold or, or they had things in that area. There might be something we should look at as well, if that's something that the group wants to do. It could be magical items. Um, I think I think that's a that's a great idea. The loss of Gerlos is like Tara's second major loss in this whole scheme of things. So she's walked over to like where Coral and uh, and Ansna are, and she's patting Ansna on the back, but she hasn't really said anything. And then she, Coral, um, like what? Don't you don't you have spells or what? What are the um? What what's available to us? I'm out. Oh, I'm out. I'm tired. I did everything. I thought I could save us with the guy. Yeah, you did, Cor- uh, Carl. Please don't. You use spells to save all the rest. I know you. I know you can't always hold on to, to re- revivify. That's that. Yeah, the diamond thing. I'm sorry. And I had it. I had it right till the end. And I thought if I healed that guy. She points again to the guy slumped on the ground. I thought I thought it would be fine, but that didn't fix it. And I just wasted the spell. What's going on with him? Um uh, uh they had a really terrible helm and I they it drew the life from this guy. And he 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 was almost dead. And I thought if I healed him, that would he could fix it. He could fly the ship, but it just it gave the ship power. But he wasn't the one flying it, so it didn't work. But but he they they drew life from him so that they could fly the ship, and I think it broke him, broke his mind. Tara's going to go over to the two people that um, Coral brought onto the ship, and one of them is well, and yeah feel like there's a potential that he might recognize this group yeah so the the guy that's standing and looks i mean relatively healthy he's he's wearing i mean rags but he doesn't look like he's lost his mind like this other fellow has he has sort of picked up on the mood on the ship and he is sort of standing with his eyes downcast if he had a hat he could take off he'd take it off yeah he's uh being respectful and standing away from the group. And he nods at Tara as uh, she comes over. Can I do like a perception check to see if I recognize him? Sure. Yeah, go ahead. I don't know why I just used uh, D&D Beyond, but I did. So. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a 10. Everyone knows. Based on the rolls that you and Josh have gotten thus far, I'm going to use dice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> no guarantee there, though. Uh, you have not seen this person before. And he, uh, very as you walk over, he very quietly says, uh, Good morning, ma'am. Uh, my name is uh, Spalding Whitley. Uh, you, you can call me Silver Eye. And you notice he does have uh, sort of bright gray eyes. 
I'm I'm terribly sorry about your loss. I hope that uh well I hope that your ship is in good enough condition to get us somewhere safe. So you my my friend says that you were you were held on the ship? Yeah, I was I was one of their prisoners. Yep. Were you were you supposed to be used to power the ship like uh Yeah, like poor Vicious over there. Yep. It was uh he was first in line. Poor fool. Nobody deserves a fate like that. Not even someone like Vicious. He was a former captain, you know. He tried to steal from the Neogi, and that was his punishment. Uh, they say there's uh, no coming back when they've been in the chair as long as he was. Where are you and Vicious from? Well, we're not from the same place, ma'am. Oh. Cora, we haven't established this, so you get to decide this. We already said what the name of that one Urbanimar that you, uh, as a group, visited was, right? Uh-huh. But what, what was Coral's Urbanimar called? Oh, of course you would. Do you have any ideas? Because this is not a thing that I have thought of. What did we call the other one? Uh, it was called the Sprawl of the Leviathan. That's right. Oh, that's cool. That is, in fact, a cool name. Yeah. Is Coral's Urbanimar named with a cool name as well? or is I it... mean, of course it is. All right. But I don't know what that is. Uh, let's, what's some other... These are floating, uh, the float, like her floating, like, uh, vessels, right? Yeah, it's a city made of a bunch of ships, like, lashed together. Okay, we got... It's to go kind of boring, like Aquatica. Or we could go off of, like, since there's a bunch of floating stuff, it could be, so, like, a play on words on Detritus. Yeah. Detritus City. Detritus. Oh. Detritus. <laughs> Thalassopolis is com- combining Greek words, meaning sea and city. Uh, Marinopolis? The Wandering Village? Coral, you like any of these? Sorry, say them again, Josh. <laughs> I was looking at other stuff. <laughs> You've got Marinopolis, Th- Thalassopolis. That's so hard to say. That's so uh, hard to aqu- say. Aquatica. You could go off of, you could go Detroit. The could go <laughs> Detroit. Detroit. Bert. <laughs> Bert. Bert City. Yeah. Typhoon City. Is it full of any one particular type of um, people? Yeah. No, that was not. I, I imagined all kinds. Wave crest. What about flotsam and jetsam? After Ariel. Oh no! Just after I was looking up synonyms of detritus and flotsam and jetsam was there. <laughs> oh, those are the eels and the I little know, mermaid. I, that occurred to me as I was saying it. <laughs> Josh will go with one of yours. What was? Pick one. Pick your favorite. Wave crest is pretty cool. Wave crest is cool. Coral haven. Oh, no, Ooh. we're not going with it. Corals. Maelstrom City. Flotsam City. Wavecrest. I like Wavecrest. Let's go with Wavecrest. Wavecrest is pretty what cool. What is coral, coral environments called again? <laughs> a reef. A reef. Driftwood. Driftwood. Driftwood is a cool name. That's cool. Driftwood. Driftwood's pretty good. Yeah, I like Driftwood. driftwood. Yeah. Let's call it Driftwood. I like that a yeah. lot. Okay. Yeah, Got let's it. go with Driftwood. That's pretty good. All right. So your town that you came from, your Urbanamar, which is a bunch of ships lashed together to make a city. Sometimes other stuff's built on top of them. Sometimes ships decide to leave, but it was called Driftwood. That's good. Yeah, I like that. So, yeah, he says, well, I, I'm from, uh, I'm from uh, Driftwood, and I think uh, your friend there uh, is one of them uh, Petrichors, ain't she? I think she's from Driftwood, too. I think I may have seen her before, or maybe one of her family. Tara looks over her shoulder at Coral. Coral's not listening. Yep. Uh, that place is a mess nowadays. Uh, you don't happen to need a... I mean, uh, maybe this ain't the best time to bring it up, <laughs> but you don't happen to need a crew member, do you? Awkward. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> I I won't be dishonest with you. We we aren't always in the safest of situations. As as you've seen, ma'am, seeing is how you just freed me from my previous unsafe situation. Uh, I would say you're the safer of the two. <laughs> Fair enough, Silver Eye. But if you if you feel like you you might be safer somewhere else in our travels, you you can always stop because I I understand and. Well, I appreciate that. That's mighty kind of you. If I need to get off the ship, I'll get off the ship. But for now, uh. I need a job, and I'd rather be working for someone who's uh, not them. 
there is kneeling down uh, by Vicious, who he's just well, mumbling. He's he's a captain of a ship that stole from the Neogi, and there is a captain of a ship that stole from <laughs> the Neogi. So she <laughs> she feels, you know, uh, it, it's a it's a weird feeling. He is curled up on the ground in a fetal position, and he's mumbling something. As as you get closer, you can hear him mumbling. You can also see these terrible wounds. He's got scars from on his arms. It looks like something's just been pierced through his arms and his legs. And you can hear him saying, put me back, please put me back. Can I try to give him water? Uh, sure. Okay. You can give him some water. He'll, he'll drink a little bit of it. And he just lies there. Can I fly up? And um, I still think I should have a little bit of flying time left, right? Sure. I'm going to say to the crew, I'm going down um, to the wreckage if you want to follow the ship down. I'm going to look around to see if I can find uh, what I left behind on the ship. Um, the faster we get whatever we can get from this and get back to the village, I think the better. So, okay. Well, make a perception check. All right, and I'll fly down there. Uh, 17? Yeah, so you get closer, and now you can see scattered across the snow the glittering of gold and silver, as well as twisted metal and broken wood. The whole wreck has kind of pancaked. Mm. And so it's going to be difficult to get inside, but there is, you think, there are gold coins scattered and maybe other kinds of coins scattered across the snow. I see. And right now with all the wreckage, there would be no way even with that 17 to find like the chest or the things that I saw. That would be. Like I mean, it's got to be in there somewhere, although yeah. it looks like the impact must have caused its contents to fly all over the place. Okay. Um, if they're going down, I don't know what exactly they're doing up there while I'm down here. I'm going to start trying to move things around and in one of my sacks collect some of the gold and silver. Okay. I mean, if you, if you want to take a while, you can collect some coins. Mm -hmm. Lumpen will just sort of hover close to the ground. What is everyone doing? Uh, that, I mean, there's nothing you can do for Garlos. Anzna begins, uh, she lays him down gently on the ship and she begins sort of cleaning and trying to do some repairs. Mm -hmm. Gaston is looking down at Gerlos. He's very somber and sad, and he's he says, uh, "Gerlos was a man with a simple mind, but sometimes it takes that simplicity to filter through the complexities of life, so we can stare deep into the truth of what it means to really be." Gerlos was brave. Gerlos was kind. The world, both this one and in the jar, is a worse place now that Gerlos is no longer. Rest in peace, my good friend, Gerlos. And he'll put coins on his eyes where they do. Um, <laughs> well, in your in, in World 83, I mean, you, you, you would just bury the body or cremate it because the soul would go into the soul jar. Out here, you don't know what the traditions are. There are probably different traditions for different people. What would you do in Arrival? I, you tell me. I mean, is there anything special they would do? They don't have a ferryman to pay. Uh, Anzna, does he have a... I, I am. I. It saddens me to say I didn't get to know Gerlos so so well. Does he have family back in the jar that we should return him to? Uh, she looks a little embarrassed and says, "Well, all of his family is dead. They, from what he told me, they all tended to die fairly young. Uh, in unfortunate accidents." <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> 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 so mean, Mike. <laughs> the end of a, a wonderful family line. <laughs> uh, he might have had some distant relatives. We could take him to a rival, I suppose. Okay. I, 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 you know, I never thought of asking everyone what they would want to do should this happen. We've been doing so well in every step, and this is so, sort of a reminder of our own frailty and temporariness. Is that the word? I just made it up. <laughs> it's good. Anzna gives Gaston a hug. Oh, thank you. I'm so sorry. Mama Sass is uh, wherever Anzna goes. She's she's helping. Like, okay. Fix the ship. She's just kind of staying close to Anzna, but not, like, intruding. Just helping in the same general area. Yeah, Anzna seems to be trying to keep busy. So disaster. Tara's gonna go to... Uh, Zartok, that's his name. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so many people. Yeah, sorry. 
<laughs> We've been playing long enough that these names are pretty good in my brain. They're there. Well, well, yeah. I, I've been playing Baldur's Gate. I don't know. I was like, what is oh, this? Oh, sure. yeah. How is sure. it? How, is it as good as everyone on the internet claims? It's like the Messiah of video games, according to the it internet It runs horrifically right on my laptop, so I'm really having a crisis. <laughs> oh, that sucks. Of, of whether yeah. I need to wait a month. Mm. and see how it plays on console or get you a should. new laptop. Yeah, you might as well. <laughs> yeah. So, sorry, uh, detour. Um, anyways, here goes the Czar talk. And uh, she's, she says, hey, uh, this, do you know anything? Like, I, arcane, what what can we do to help a vicious? Is it, um, what is his status? Is he still alive? Yeah, he's alive. He is alive. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, I don't know. Let me art start talking making our contract. <laughs> All right. Yeah, sure. <laughs> I don't know if that matters or not. So twenty seven Zartok f- is thinking about what to do. Uh so Arcana might not help you too much here. You know that he has been drained. Uh his life has been drained from him by this Neogi spell jammer based on Coral's description and uh, what Silver Eye said. And Coral seems to have restored some energy to him with her healing. Uh, he doesn't seem physically to be too badly wounded, although he's obviously malnourished and he's an older guy. He's just not in great shape. In terms of psychologically what you could do to help him, you're, you're not sure. When it comes to serious mental illness, there's not a lot of spells that can do a lot there unless you get into the really powerful stuff. Like, yeah, a wish would help. Oh, right? sure. But you're not even sure that a heal spell would help this guy. Oh. So greater restoration? I don't want a metagame there. Uh, mm. Maybe maybe a greater restoration? Let's let's read the spell description. I just had it open. Uh, one effect that charmed or petrified the target. One curse, including the target's attunement to a cursed magic item. Any reduction to one of the target's ability scores. One effect reducing the target's hit points. Maximum. No, none of that would really quite do it. Or exhaustion. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I think if anything's going to help him, not to be too uh, anachronistic, but long-term therapy is <laughs> oh what God. this guy needs. I wonder if this world has psychologists. I think, I think that, Tara, I think that maybe it's just going to be time that helps him. I mean, the, the sitting in the chair that long could have warped the very fabric of who he is. Okay. So... Nothing I can do is my is the answer. There is not sure what to do with that, but she's gonna pick the guy up, and uh, I guess he weighs nothing. It's just like picking up a uh, skin and bones. She's gonna carry him to like the the crew area to like put him in a hammock, okay? So he can just have somewhere comfortable that's not the floor of the deck. Sure. And uh, we'll try and make sure he gets food and water and stuff because that. I'll have an asylum. <laughs> uh, Coral, while they were having their conversation, was standing just kind of staring at nothing. As she sees Tara go downstairs, down to the crew quarters, she follows. Okay. Uh, so I had I had a thought about Gerhalos. And it's not a thing I've ever done. And I don't know that anybody, I don't know anybody who's ever done it. But there's a spell I can do. He'd come back different. Probably, maybe. And it's real expensive. I don't have the gold for it. Uh, but there is a thing I could do, but I can't, I can't, I can't do it today. Or I don't have the money. Um, and I don't know if it's a good idea. Are you, are you going to raise him like a zombie? No. <laughs> no. No, nothing like that. Uh, it, it's, it's reincarnate. He, he just might come back in a different body. Like, he'd be him... But he might be different. Like a butterfly? <laughs> Kinda. I guess, yeah. He could be an ant? No, no. Oh, no. Sorry. I misunderstood. I, th- I was thinking more of the metaphorical butterfly. Uh, now, he'll be like a humanoid. But like he might be a dwarf. Or he might be an orc. Or he might be a tiefling. Or, you know, a gnome. Would it be like an infant? No, I think I don't. I don't know. I think he'd just be his age, but I, I, I like. I, I've never done it. I don't know anybody who's done it. 
Oh my gosh, El Baby Garlos. Is this what we need? <laughs> baby Dragonborn Garlos. <laughs> becomes a weird sitcom. <laughs> Me and my 15 parents. <laughs> <laughs> um... So you said it costs a lot of gold. Is there like an item cost? I, I got, I, I gotta get like some special oils and you know stuff like that to to do it to to uh, anoint his body, and it's it's real costly. Is everybody currently googling this spell? Because I see a lot of downcast eyes. No, no, <laughs> I'm not. But everyone else might be. Um, I'm trusting so, your magic right now. <laughs> I, uh, I mean, we could do it. I. I'm not against it. I don't. I, we could talk to everyone else. I don't. When you say he might be different, he's like, he's himself. I think he I just think, has a different body. Uh, yeah, that's. I think. I think. Uh, like think? his personality will be the same, but just in a different, in a different body. Maybe. I mean, he might come back the same. I guess, but statistically likely that he would be something else. <laughs> let's let's bring him down here too, and. Uh, We'll cover him up with a sheet for now, and uh, and we'll we'll talk. Okay. But right now, I got to go back to. Well, I said some some bad things to Billy Bourbon Durbin, and I gotta <laughs> <laughs> I gotta get back with her. Okay. Uh, well, just like I need it's it's a thousand gold. I don't know where I can find the items, and I need at least a piece of his body if I'm gonna do it. We got many the whole piece, as far as I know. Uh, yep. You know what's sad is like as a player, I'm like, I'm not, I'm not. This is the player, not any of the characters. I'm like, I'm not gonna spend that to bring back heroes. Right. <laughs> Fortunately, <laughs> Coral only has a hundred gold, so like, I literally oh, can't yeah. do it because the player does not want to spend that kind of money on well, an yeah, NPC. Like, well, yeah, yeah. I do. I just don't have the gold. I, I mean, we could spend a thousand gold to get the chalice to do a uh, uh, hero's feast. And I'd much rather spend the gold on that. But this is what Coral would do. Yeah, yeah. The, the characters would would think differently. Well, like, yeah. Yeah, you know, I got the one thousand gold piece bill to like bring back to life, and then it's just like, there's nothing we can do. <laughs> <laughs> so, Aster, you've been searching the area for coins. Yes. Can I? Do you want me to make another? I'm not searching just for the coins. I'm also searching for the chest to see if there was like items or things like that. Yeah, so uh, go ahead and give me a perception check again, just to see what all you're able to find as you search. Oh, beautiful. 23. Yeah, you find a bunch of coins. I'm going to give you some numbers. Are you ready? Oh, shoot. Um, it's going to be uh, a thousand, yeah. isn't it? I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> That's rough. Yes, I'm ready. 423 copper coins. Copper? Okay. 217 silver coins. Silver. 151 gold coins. 151 gold. And 34 platinum coins. You're pretty sure there was room for more than that in that chest, but this is all you're able to find outside the ship. Okay. And then any items or anything that I could, for moving wood? You find bits of paper, some of which might have been part of a spell book or something at some point, but <clears throat> uh, now they're just, you know, scraps. Uh, anything else that you're going to find, you think you're probably going to have to dig through the wreck. You're going to have to get someone down here with some equipment and try to take the wreck apart to find anything else. I see. Like, I've, I'm, like, searching, and then, like, I'm, like, I hit my hand on something. I'm, like, ah, stupid, stupid Miyogi. Carlos. No, there's, like, a tear in my eye. Aster, you, you finish your search. You're pretty sure there's nothing more you can do without getting some equipment to take the ship apart, basically. What's your next destination? Are you going back to the gnome village then? Whatever I have to carry this gold, I will bring it back to the to the deck and set it down. Is is everybody still down there? Is Quarrel and, and Terra downstairs? I assume Zartok's still up here. I think Zartok's on the deck. Ansna and Mama Sass are on the deck fixing things. I guess Gaston's up here. Coral and Terra are below deck. With the bodies? With the body, yeah. Gotcha. Zartok, um, do you think it's time to navigate the ship? It's th What I have here is all I could find. I, I w we would have to dig through all of this, and I don't think we can do that by ourselves. But there is things in here if, if we need resources. This place might 
have it. Um, but I'd like to get back to the village and finish up with Gerlos and decide what we're doing. We can't keep waiting. We need to make decisions. Should we start heading back? I, mean, I agree. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if this means that they know um, they know our location, so we can't. Yeah, we can't. We can't stay here anymore. And of course, um, you know, the world that you came from is well. That's kind of like a a, a, a bottle full of slaves, if you think about it from their perspective. So, if they were to find that, then I mean, that's a, like a a game over. So uh, I think we got to do something. Yeah. So yeah, let's go back. Okay. Is uh is uh Lumpen up here with us? Lumpen's in the helm. He doesn't have the ability to fly the ship remotely. He has to be in the helm. Okay. So he's sitting in the big chair in the main cabin. So Zartok, why don't you head down there? Tell Lumpen where we need to go. I'll uh, tell Terra what I found and see what we can do next. Okay. Sounds good. All right. I'll head over to uh to Terra. All right, you also go below deck uh, in the hold, where Terra and Coral are talking quietly. You can see that this broken sailor is in a hammock, and you can see that Gerlos' body is on the ground, covered by a sheet. Mm. Hey, Captain Coral. I told... Uh, I don't mean to be presumptuous. I, t- I told Zartok that we should probably start heading towards the village now, if that's okay. That That is where... I was going to go. I was just telling Coral I need to talk with Billy Bourbon and, well, I guess I need to talk with Ridey too. Yeah. So our talk brought up a good point. I would like to do a burial for Gerlos. I don't think that would take too much of our time. Maybe rest for the night, but we need to leave very soon. They know where we're at. Our presence makes the village a target, and it makes World 83 a target. Um, and we shouldn't be here. Well, I think that's why we, we got to talk to Billy Bourbon and to Ridey, because I I think that uh, our gnomes should leave Benorthen and while well, we know where they can go. Yeah. We, they can go through Ridey's mirror. I, I don't think that us being there right now makes them a target. I think us being there before makes them a target. Yeah. I mean, they're going to go back and get them as slaves because they know they're there. Well, that's nothing our brave crew can't handle. We could... I know we need to stop Leverian, but... Actually, if I'm remembering correctly from some of the things we've heard, isn't Leverian trying to take out the Naogi? Yeah, I mean, I guess we have two enemies and they're fighting. Which is an advantage to us. And maybe if they wear themselves down, we can take down whoever is left. That might be our next destination. I don't know if the Varian's actually actively fighting the Neogi just yet. He's he's getting ships to do it. I mean, I think his plan is to eventually do it, but what's the world going to be like by the time he gets around to it? That's true. He's an elf. He's long-lived. He doesn't have the same concept of time as we do. Seems like a man who's moving pretty fast to me. Yeah. I just know we have to do something, and we're we're running out of time. You can feel the ship move as Lumpen begins sailing back to the gnome village. Well, yeah, let's talk to Ridey and Billy Bourbon Durbin. Almost forgot her name. Well, I know you want to. I know you want to bury Garlos, but Coral was just telling me that if we had the money, we could we could re- reincarnate him. Yeah, that's right. What? We can save him? It, I mean, he'll come back. It, he may be in a different body, but it'll be him. Of course. Do, do we have enough of the gold that we would need to accomplish this? I don't. I've only got about 100 gold. I just, I found riches, and I'm sure there's more in the wreckage of the Neogi ship. We could scrounge up what we need from that. We could save Gerlos. Was it a thousand? Yeah, that's more than what I found. But it's... It, I, I, we're close to the a thousand. And this was just what I found just by myself. Looking around, we could find the rest. We could save Gerlos. I feel like that's a priority. No? I mean, if I could sleep, I could I could 
you know, turn into something that would be real helpful to get through the mess, but I, I can't do it today. Well, I could if I took a short rest, I suppose. Uh, a brief nap, if you will. That's that's my vote. We all need a rest. Yeah, but no, no, if we can save Gerlos, that's my vote. My vote would be to get resources, go through this wreckage tomorrow, and then decide what we need to do after. Maybe someone can stay behind to talk to Billy Bourbon Durbin. But I want to save Gerlos. I don't like losing people. I know that's a part of life, but... It don't feel good. Yeah. Anyway. That makes me feel a little better. Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go help Enza and the rest with the repairs, guys. Corellin's needle flies westward toward the Gnome Village, and eventually the ship begins descending. I'm assuming Zartok is going to leave Lumpen in control of the ship. He seems to be doing an okay job. I'll just do a little roll to see how gentle that landing is. Uh, not great. Not a great landing. <laughs> uh, question. Yeah? Uh, I don't know how long it took us to get back. Probably not long, not long. really. Okay. Because we're only 40 damage short on the ship. Sure. So I, I, I don't think we could have fixed that in that time. But Also, I, I think I said that, that some, damaged. some of that damage was severe enough. It might take you more time to fix okay. it. I do recall that now. Yeah. Uh, you can see that the wizard fortress next to the village is intact, but the village is in rough shape. The meeting hall's hasty repairs have collapsed. There are ballista bolts protruding from buildings and cobblestones. The roof of a storage building has collapsed. You don't see any movement down there at all. You can see the glowing lights of the suns, the little sun circles that they were using to warm their crops are still visible. But you think maybe there are fewer of them than before? And you also don't see or hear any cows as you approach. Also, you may have forgotten about this. There's a spell jammer parked in the fields just north of the town square. Oh, yeah. uh, it's a long triangular shaped ship. It's painted bright red. Uh, that was the, the ship that some of the pirates on the or the slavers on the ground were using. That King Dapper ship? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and I think King Dapper and a whole lot of his dudes are on the ground. That's right. There's some corpses here. Uh, there's blood all over the cobblestones. The well appears intact in the middle of the, of the town square. But yeah, you don't really see anything going on here. It's very quiet. So Lumpen wants to know if he should land in the Spelljammer port or land here in the square. Zartok? Uh, just just jump us off in the, in the square, mate. Okay. So he'll he'll hover and let you get off the ship, and then he'll take it over to the Spelljammer port and land it there. Sounds good. Yeah, you left yep. that open, the sliding doors for that. You left that open, so he'll go land the ship. Not very gently, but he does land it. <laughs> yeah, so uh, who's getting off? Tara is going to get off the ship, but she also wants to talk to Lumpen. Okay, all right. Well, you, he'll, he'll wait to leave before you're finished. Hi, Tara. Hey, Lumpen. Um... I'm sorry about Gerlos. Thank you. Thank you. You've done a great job. I just wanted to tell you you've done a great job, and um, thank you. And I know you're going to go kind of land the ship. There's a guy. Uh, his name is Vicious. He could use some food and some water if you could check on him and see if he can eat. That would be great while we're while we're handling uh, everything in the Gnome Village. Is that okay? I don't know. That sounds a little scary. Is he Vicious? <laughs> oh no no uh, you want me to take you to meet him he's not vicious oh i have to stay in the chair while i'm flying the ship okay well I, I, he he could not hurt a fly right now oh okay i will see what i can do for him all right thanks lumpen so he'll drop everybody uh, drop everybody off but who is that who's getting off the ship uh coral will get off mama sass stays okay zartok staying or going zartok will stay Stay with the ship and Gaston can get off. And Aster? I'm, I'm going to get off. Okay. I'll be with, uh, because I know Tara wants to talk to Billy Bourbon Durbin and yeah. Heidi. Yep. All right. Well, Ansna will stay on the ship and hopefully get to work on some of those repairs. Uh, and Lumpen is happier knowing that some people are staying on the ship with him. He's just a little rag golem. Oh, what is Silver Eyes <laughs> doing then? Is he staying on the ship hopping with repairs? Good question. I guess he asks Tara if he can stay on the ship and help with the repairs. Yes. All right. Yes, thank you. So that's what he'll do. So you all disembark. You climb 
down the ladder into the city square. And again, it is quiet. You can hear some birds chirping. Too quiet. You don't hear any of the cows that you usually hear. Hmm. Well, this is real creepy. Should I uh, play a tune? Tara is so tired. Call out their name. Uh. (laughs) Did they load everyone up on a ship or do we think they ran away? As far as you know, nobody actually got taken. They were chained all together and we gave them the keys and we told them to go into the wizarding complex behind the secret door. Oh. I believe that's that was the instructions given to them. Maybe that is where they are. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, let's go talk to them. <laughs> Can Coral look around before we go in just to see if yeah. there's like... I mean, gnome, the gnomes are tricky little little guys and may just be hiding in plain sight. Okay. Make a perception check. Uh, that is a 25. Yeah. So you look around and you spot in the direction of Righty's little hut... On the back of a building, you spot Righty peeking around the corner of a building, uh, watching all of you. And when you see him, he sort of smiles and gestures for you to come over. Uh, Tara, your uh, your friend Righty's over there. Uh, Tara smiles real big uh, as she looks at Righty. Uh, she's glad to see that he's okay. All right, so uh, you walk over to talk to Righty, I guess? Yes. All right, so he, in the shadow of this building, says, Hey, so... Uh, yeah, that was, uh, that was rough. That was pretty crazy. How's everybody doing? Hey, Righty. Yeah, it, it was. I don't know if you met Gerlos, but Gerlos, we we lost him during that fight, but everyone else is 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 all right. Where's uh, Billy Bourbon and, and the rest of the, the gnomes? Uh, yeah, well, uh, about that, uh... So, Philby Bourbon and the, the other gnomes, they, and in fact, a lot of your refugee friends from uh, your little world there, uh, they all kind of decided this place w- was not great anymore. And uh, I told them if they wanted to, they could go to, you know, through my mirror, you know, to Fifeness. And they did. They, they did that. They're all gone. Well, I mean... Actually, a couple gnomes stuck around here because they didn't. They really didn't want to go. But you're not going to find them. They're hiding. But almost all the rest of them, they took their cows, they took some of their stuff, and they went to Fifeness. And, uh, well, I, I hate to say it, but I think I probably am going to go too because this place doesn't seem... Uh, it's not the remote, quiet, safe place I was hoping for, you know? Righty, thank you so much for for telling them about your mirror and, and offering them a place to go because I was going to come to you and ask you the same thing if you could help them get out. So I didn't. I really appreciate I, it. Oh, yeah, I didn't really see what else I could do, you know, but we got to stay quiet about it. You know, shh, got to stay quiet. <laughs> right. Cause, Mom's the word. Right. So here's the other thing, you know. So I got my mirror, and the mirror's here, right? I can't take the mirror through the mirror to Fifeness. Yeah. Right? Uh, to get here, I had to take a ship. Well, as you can see, there are, there ain't a lot of ships coming and going from the, the port. The dock, right? Yes. So, uh, any chance I could uh, hitch a ride? Maybe you could drop me off? I'm, hold on, I'm confused. Isn't, don't, don't, do you not just want me to move your mirror? Or you can't go through your own mirror? Oh, I can, but then the mirror is still here. And someone could come through the mirror to Fifeness. Right? Yes. Yeah. And I don't I don't want that being possible, especially since this place is so dangerous, like, you know? So Oh, so you, you want me to you want to take the mirror to Fifeness? Yeah, yeah, you got it. That's it. Yeah. Oh Shh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think we could we could do that. Or you know, you could go through the mirror and we could keep the mirror on our ship and then we you know, we could take the the mayor to Fifeness eventually. I don't know if you want to be on the ship. But like I said, we just we just had a real kind of dangerous interaction with someone following us. And, you know, if you want to be safe, I understand. Like like an escape hatch. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah, you could do that. But here's the thing, though. You can't let somebody else get the mirror. Right? If someone's gonna take your ship and you're worried about 
getting captured. You gotta, like, let the ship crash and break the mirror, right? You can't let somebody else get it. Okay, yeah, well, I mean, my plan is to eventually bring it to Fiveness back to you. Yeah. But, um, but I didn't want you to, like I said, have to be on our ship and be... I feel like I've already introduced you to too much danger. Then I don't think that's what you're looking for, righty. You are so right. <laughs> yeah, so right. <laughs> and uh, Bilby Bourbon Durbin did leave a message. She Ooh, said, this is- don't ever talk to us again, and we don't ever want to see you again. Yeah, I think she left <laughs> me that message earlier, okay. too. Okay, that, that's good. Yeah, she was not real happy. They took some of the sun rings with them, you know. Uh, they took all their cattle with them. They buried the dead gnomes. Uh, yeah. Who stayed back? Uh, just a few of the, you know, real rural types that live out in the edges of the town. What about our people? Is there still guards by World 83? Is, uh, yeah, that's leave? the thing. The, there's nobody there anymore. Nope. They all left. I see. You know, about that, you know, I was thinking about that. You got this whole world and glass thing to worry about, right? Mm-hmm. Have you considered just, you know, like, taking it somewhere? Maybe you take it completely off the world, com- you know, somewhere safer? Because this place, this place is a mess. And the guard gnomes, they aren't going to be around to take, away- take care of the buildings like they've been doing. You got to make some tough choices. There's got to be somebody somewhere who knows a good place you could take that thing. Oh, Mun. We can take it to Mun. I don't, I don't know who that is, but uh, yeah, sure. If you know somebody, take it to him. That's a that's a, a really good point and and thank you. Yeah, we do want to make sure the world eighty three and I I did I knew the guards wouldn't be there, but I didn't think about the building collapsing. So so thank you, Righty. Yeah, sure. Oh, and, and and Jeb said bye, and he said may your ship be clean. And uh, <laughs> yeah, if you need him, he'll be in fiveness. Thank you. You've helped a lot. Yeah, sure. Yeah, it's nothing. It's no big deal. So uh. Guess I'm gonna go. Uh, Tara offers him a hug. She's like covered in blood, though. <laughs> he uh, <laughs> gives you a real quick pat and then offers a hand to shake. <laughs> okay. Um. Yeah. She she offers she accepts the pat and shakes his hand. And uh, he sort of wraps his coat around him, and he goes into his building, and you can hear the door lock behind him. Wait. And uh, I gotta go in there. I gotta get. The, you gotta get, gotta the, get mirror? the mirror. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. So yeah, he'll 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 take you in, <laughs> and have you take the mirror out, and uh, you, you see he's already packed all his stuff, uh, and you can see uh, through the mirror into the cave. He's actually set a bunch of stuff in there, and yeah, he he walks through the mirror, waves to you, and you grab the mirror. Now you have two big mirrors for your uh, for your ship. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Fortunately, only one I'm- of them talks. I was going to say, at least this one doesn't talk to us. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well. Every time one of you walks by the mirror in the ship, you're all beat up and bloodied, and it just goes, Whew. Oh, goodness. Oh, <laughs> we need a bath. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, Brady is gone. The mirror is on your ship. I have suggestions, guys. Uh, Righty triggered some thoughts. It's an insightful little gnome. So, here's the thing. When looking at the ship, we have some some pretty serious damage. I think it might take maybe a day or so, maybe two. I don't know what the timetable will look like if we can have some of our crew continue to build and rebuild the ship so that we can leave uh, this village. While we're doing those repairs, tomorrow we could go to the wreckage and try to comb it for the money that we may need for this spell that Coral says she could perform. These are just ideas. Maybe any magical items we could find, anything in that wreckage that could help us mm. in what we have to do next, whether that's fighting the Neogi, Leverian, or just whatever we decide to do. It might be a good idea to get resources that we could do tomorrow after we're rested. Coral said she could change into something that could be more helpful, um, and we would have more magic at our disposal. After we do that, hopefully we can get that ship back and running to full capacity. We can take the jars and go up to Mun and see if Mun would be able to caretake 
World 83, and maybe if there's an, another jar with life, and then we can leave for months to whatever destination we have that we need to go to, whether that be the Neogi or Leverian. Just do it step by step. I think those are good ideas, Aster. Um, also, and Dara's going to point out into the field where the other spell jammer is parked. Also, I think we should go ahead and, you know, put that in our little spell jammer hatch thing. And, uh, you know, we can we can use it as a backup ship or, you know, parts or something. You know, it might have a, a nice ballista on it. Yeah, that was a great <laughs> idea. And maybe, oh, maybe that ship has its own kind of resources, riches, maybe some gold that the pirates stole that we could use to our advantage. Maybe they even have some items we can use to scavenge through the wreckage or just use in our deadly adventures. Yeah, yeah. King Dapper also might have, you know, something pretty cool in his body. Um, <laughs> you know, the <just> same. <laughs> okay, we've got a lot of looting to do. <laughs> so we've reached the looting phase. <laughs> yes. All right. It's the important step. I'm getting, so that, no, the gnome cleric that Jessica played at one point. She, I assume she, I was going to see from Righty if she said she stayed behind, but I don't think she did. No. I don't think she did. No, she did not. Dibberin. Dibberin Pilk. Dibberin Pilk. 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 I had to remember her name. <laughs> That's rough. All right, let's <laughs> pull up these pirates here and see if they have anything especially cool. Yeah, like King Dapper. Um, I mean, they don't her. have any magical weapons. Boo. Boo. He had a potion of cloud giant strength, but he drank it. Rude. Oh, that's cool. And he also drank a potion of invulnerability. Also rude. Now, the deck wizard that they had was casting spells, but doesn't have a spell book on him. But it might be inside the ship. Okay. Yep. And the other guys, so what do they have on them? They, I've told you what they don't have. They don't have magic on them. Uh, let's see. The regular sailors, they have long swords. Um, a, a wizard has a quarter staff. The captain, uh, King Dapper, has a dagger and a long sword, and that's about it. Yeah. Huh? There's piling bodies like junk, junk, junk. <laughs> <laughs> the ship, the spell jammer, is a type called a lance ship. And the name that is painted on the side is The Fang. And it is armed with a light ballista, which is the same thing your ship has. And it takes a crew of nine normally, but it has some cargo space. It's very maneuverable. It's a Class B maneuverability. However, it's not very tough. It has only 90 hull points. It is equipped with a minor helm, which is not as good a helm as your ship has. Are you going to actually search the ship? Yes. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah, so you find that it is... Devoid of crew, but full of supplies for feeding the crew and the captives that they expected to take. So there's quite a bit of food that will last quite a while. There are also a lot of manacles for imprisoning people. You also find a bit of money on board, but it looks like they were sailing extra light. You find 120 copper, 84 silver, and 30 gold. And you find a spell book. Josh, do you want to take note of what's in the spell book? Yeah. I can do that. All right. Cantrips, friends, mage hand, press of digitation, ray of frost. Got it. Level one, disguise self, fog cloud, mage armor, witch bolt, sleep. Got it. Level two, gust of wind, melf's acid arrow, misty step. Got it. Level three, fireball. Wind Wall. Counterspell. Got it. Level four. Fire Shield. Confusion. Death Ward. Got it. And those are all the spells. Cool. So that's the ship. It's intact. It's in great shape. Unfortunately, I think both of our flyers, pilots, if you will, yep. are on the other ship. That's correct. So, um, uh, but uh, yeah, Coral, is gonna Coral wanna... can't do it today. Yeah, Coral can't yeah. do it right now. Yeah. But uh, Sierra is going to want to transfer food to our ship. Mm -hmm. Yep. And also uh, preferably take this ship to the little port area. Right. To park it. Yep. As our, as our backup ship, you know? Yep. That's a smart idea. Although you probably want to, you know, wait for someone to come over here and be able to fly it. 
Is there anything else you want to do before you take a rest? I think that's probably next on your agenda is to take a rest. Yeah. I don't have rest. anything. Rest. Check on World 83. Rest. You're going to check on World 83. Rest. World 83 is oh. just as you left it. What about that other world, the desert world? It's uh, flashing just like uh, it was before. Nice. So we're saying that we t- were able to transfer all that food. Everything we needed to do today, we were able to do. You, well, you haven't done, you haven't transferred the food yet because nobody has gone over to fly that new spell jammer into the port. Could we do that before we rest? Well, the issue is that nobody has spells left unless Zartok has some he wants to burn. <laughs> He's got some, not many. Okay. So uh, I guess, Aster, you walk down through the wizard research complex. You walk down the mile long passage to the port and you find that Zartok and the rest of the crew are there trying to fix up the spell jammer, or maybe Zartok's working on the other spell jammers. I don't know. You want to tell him that they need someone to yeah. fly the other ship? Yeah, Zartok. I, don't, I know we're pretty tapped. Maybe it's better to have the ships close, just in case we need to make a quick getaway. Uh, w- would would you be able to bring the ship, the pirate ship, to this port so we have it as a secondary ship before we go to sleep? Sure, yeah, I can do that. Thanks. It's been a rough, uh, day. It has, yeah. It has been very rough. Lots of things to think about. Yeah. Okay, so Zartok, you're going to fly the other ship into the port? Oh, yeah. All right. So I will assume that you will transfer supplies from that ship onto Corellin's Needle, Mm -hmm. and the rest of the day is spent in repairs and moving supplies, and thinking about what you want to do next. Mm-hmm. Maybe we'll save the next day for the real discussion about what you do next. Mm-hmm. For now, let's get you that long rest that you've finally earned. <laughs> and the experience points that you finally earned. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Here we go, guys. All right. So, <laughs> the total per person is 24,000 experience points. How much? How much? Twenty four thousand. Rounding, <laughs> I rounded it up a little bit, but twenty four thousand. Wow! And I think that pushes most of you up a level. Oh! Now, Josh and Jessica, you get to decide because you have both your characters in the action through most of that, right? I'm going to let you decide which one of them gets half and which one gets full. Mm. Mm-hmm. If you want to give Mama Sass the whole thing and give Coral half, you can do that, or you could switch it the other way around. Wow, that's tough. That is tough. Oh. They both could have gotten there with 24,000 each, but they Ooh. can't get there. They, one of, neither of them can get there with only 12. Another option is that I divide it equally among everybody, and then everybody will get a little bit less. So nah, I add, that's all right. add those two characters to the total number, and everybody would get a little bit less. I'm nah, good I don't want to do that. That makes me feel bad. I'm personally fine with it because um, they, it's not like they were half involved in combat at all. I'll let Jessica and Josh decide because they're the ones. I think in to... this case it makes sense for them to be full. Okay. Well, if we divide it six ways, let let's see what this number is, and I might change my mind in a moment. <laughs> that will be uh, let's good. see rounding. Uh, that'll be around 16,000 each. Never mind. We can do it the other way. You sure? <laughs> Neither of them get a uh, get a level. Even with 16,000? Yeah. I'm fine with 16,000, but all right. I don't get a level with 16,000. Oh, I get no. awfully close. Oh, no, yeah. do that then. Let's do it. Let's do the 24, and uh, I will get... Hmm. I'm going to give Gaston the full amount. Yeah, he did so he much was, work that... He that. was conscious and... Zartok well, he also did not. so much. How many people did Gaston kill that combat? He's a, a lot. murdering machine now. He killed so <laughs> many One gulper people. is an incredible weapon, and Gaston is a murder machine. That's all there is to it. Because so Zartok is not going to level up, I don't think. I'm going to metagame slightly and say that Mama Sass gets it because her level up is far more interesting than... Oh, Zartok just oh. barely leveled up. Look at that. Wow. Wow. Zartok did a lot of work, too, though. But what a Coral beast. gets a seventh level spell. Oh. Oh, no. So Terra's level 14. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh. I guess I'm going to have to pick a feat or an ability score improvement now. Hmm. 
Zartok really only gets a seven level spell, but it doesn't have any seven level spells. But yeah. he can cast spells seven level style. See, so. that's that's the thing because Coral doesn't get anything else really except for the seventh level spell. But seventh level spell is not nothing. How does our healing work again? Our hit points? I forget. Yeah. You didn't really get roll out. You don't have any seventh level spells in your book at all. Mm mm. Huh. Well. Maybe if you go dig through that Neogi wreck, maybe there'll be some. Maybe. Maybe. They won't be nice spells. <laughs> it's okay with Zotok. It's, all <laughs> it's fine with that. You get your evening's rest. Does Tara get anything cool when she levels up? I have to make some decisions. Okay. So why don't we stop this episode here, and we'll find out what everybody gets when they level up next time. Okay. okay. Yeah! Oh, leveling up. I mean, Firestorm's really cool, <laughs> and so <laughs> is oh, Sophie's Choice. See what we can do next. Okay, sounds good. I'm gonna have myself a, a wee first because <laughs> I drank a lot of Mountain Dew, and it's really catching up on me. Oh. You got, you guys keep playing. <laughs> 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 Sorry. All right. Talk goes below deck. <laughs> All right, I'll head over to uh, to Tara. Mike, how does how does health work again for us? Hit points? Oh, uh, yeah. So if Is you want to heal, then you can use your hit dice. You roll hit dice to heal. And when you take a long rest, you recover half of your hit dice, right? So I don't know how many hit dice you used when you last rested before this long, long mess began. But uh, whatever you have left, you can roll to heal. And then as you take your long rest, when you finish it, you will get half your hit dice back. Does that make sense? Yeah, so yes. for the long rest, you use whatever hit dice you have. Yep. You roll each of those hit dice to try to get hit points back. And so we don't we don't heal, but the next day, if we used up all of our hit dice, when we take our long rest and wake up, do we get any more health from taking the long rest? Or the not? long rest is you rolling those hit dice and getting hit dice back. So let's suppose, let's suppose for example, you've already used all your hit dice and you have none to use, mm -hmm. right? That means this long rest will get you no hit points back. But okay. it will get your ha half of your hit dice back. So if you take a short rest, you could then roll all those hit dice. Okay, so I'm going to have a lot of uh, hit dice still. So okay, I'll use those. All right, so we're between episodes here. We're going to start the next episode in just a little bit. While you guys, you guys go ahead and do your leveling up. And then wait, when we level up, um, for the max hit points, your max hit points, uh, you, your current hit points go up by the amount of your max hit points going up, right? So okay. if your max hit points went up by eight, then your current hit points go up by eight as well. Okay, so we're not rolling for it; it's just the maximum. Oh, uh, you need to roll it. Yeah, you need okay, to. Okay, yeah, okay, that's what yeah, I wanted yeah, to. Ask. Yeah, you need to roll it. I'm just saying, whatever that is, whatever that amount is, you got to roll it, and then you your hit points, maximum and current, will go up by whatever that number is. You got it. Okay, so uh, I'm sorry, I was not paying attention. Full, full disclosure, when I take a long rest, I get my all of my hit die or just half my hit half die? Half your hit dice back. Great, okay. So I need to roll, because I think I was at zero. And half the hit <laughs> so I dice. I need to roll like seven. And You're half at the zero hit dice, then. hit dice? Yeah. And so, if you, well, hold on. If you used all of your hit dice already, because you remember, before all this started, you guys went into the wizard research complex to take a, re a long rest, yeah. but it got interrupted, and you only got a short rest out of it, Right. Yes. If you rolled all your hit dice then and you have none left, then that means this long rest, you don't get to roll anything to get your hit points back. All you get is you get half your hit dice back over this long rest. And then you could take a short rest on top of that and roll all that, those half of your hit dice if you want to do that. Coral can also heal you. Okay. So I get all of my abilities back. Yes. But I have like 42 hit points, I think. Okay. Yes. Coral, Coral can heal you in the morning, too. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and I mean, I feel like I could also just rest for another hour. Yes, like that's right. Okay. You could take another hour rest, 
Roll all those hit dice, well, and you'll be out of hit dice again. A leisurely breakfast, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes, but you'll be out of hit dice again. So I'd rather Coral heal you, and you manage to refill your hit dice in case things go down. But it's up to you. Um, is, is it half of the hit dice that I used that I get back, or half of my total hit half dice? Half of your total. Oh, okay. Yeah, so uh, what's, your, what's your level right now? Like how many hit dice I have what, total? What, what level? What level is Aster? Is Rogue plus Bard levels? What level is? Yeah, twelve. So twelve. I have... So you would get six hit dice back. Oh, perfect. Right now you can't roll those unless you take another rest after your long rest. Right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yep, I got. So it. with that, Jessica, I think we're. I mean, Coral could have her spells, or I could have no hit die, which requires a short rest to use anyway. So it's one know. spell. I can do a heal on you, and it takes my fifth level spell, but it'll give you seventy HP. Oh, that's actually pretty nice. Yeah, we could do that. It's not the worst. Yeah, it ta- it takes a high level spell, but okay, I think that's all right. I'm surprised with ne- how nice Righty ended up being. You know, I just I never. I didn't have to convince him to let people over in his secret mirror. <laughs> well, when you got a whole gnome village all panicking and running around, uh, and you know there's a safe place they can go, and you don't want to be there yourself anymore at this in this gnome village, there's really not a lot of downside to just telling everyone, okay, go through the mirror. Such a nice guy. I always knew he was. <laughs> 